Mate, that was my language. Like every day, I was like, I'm gonna make ten k. I was telling myself that every day. I end up spending thirteen thousand pound on a on a mentor called Chris Spearman. The guy come in and turn. The, <laughs> he went, I'll pretend I'm not seeing that, Ross. <laughs> so he, he said, didn't want to do it. So I was like, well, I'll take yours. I was just taking their fucking tours for them. Everyone was the enemy to me. So here we are today, joined with Ross Cahoon, owner and founder of the Training Club. Uh, how are you? I'm good, mate. Thank you. How did this absolute unbelievable journey of yours start? Obviously, I've known you for a few years, Ross. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I know when you first got the keys to this place, I thought it was an absolute massive risk. Mm. Um, me just being a local lad from the area, seeing someone having a go, but I absolutely respected that. I know where you were at before this, but for the people who don't know, mm -hmm. uh, let us know kind of your background, where to, where to start from. So my background has always been football, um, as a full-time footballer at Sunderland. Um, and I guess that's kind of, set me in good stead, I guess, going through the, the, the struggles and kind of challenges that you do as a young footballer at that level. Um, I think that has definitely allowed me to, to be who I am today, so to speak. And how did your sort of football career progress? Where did it end? So it ended as a YT at Sunderland um, and then having multiple trials, trying to keep the dream alive, so to speak. And then just in the Northern League, just in the local leagues, really. There's a lot of, it's like a big talent pool, I think, at the time when I went into it. Mm -hmm. It seemed to be the the general sort of regression for people that just drop into there. And then it was a case of trying to get out of there into the, into the professional football again. How did you deal with that mentally then? Because obviously you're trying to keep the dream alive. You're a young yeah. lad. It's every lad's dream to be a footballer. I think it was even mine, to be fair, mate. I've never mm. played football in my life. <laughs> um, but I, how do you kind of mentally deal with that then when you know that you know it could be effectively slipping away from yeah. you? When I was in my last year at Sunderland, honestly, like I'd been there since I was nine and I was like, literally, oh, I need a fresh start here. I mm -hmm. wanted this, like I was that type of character anyway, like nothing really phased us. I thought I'm at a Premier League club, playing well, I back myself, I'll be able to go anywhere, especially with an agent and stuff, do you know what I mean? So that's kind of the, the general feel around players, especially at that level. And then, so that was my mindset. And then went on a few trials to Burnley and stuff and, a couple of top clubs and done really well there. Um, this is how ruthless the game is. I literally had my medical at Burnley. I was driving home thinking I was, that was it. I was done. I've signed. And then I got a call off my agent saying that the Sean Dyche had actually overruled it. Fucking hell. And that was the closest I got to staying in the game at that level, I guess. And then after that, it was just f like politics and fannying on with loads of like lower league clubs and that. And to a point where they can't even afford your wages. Bearing in mind, you've got to pay for your own digs as well. Like, oh, can it was, it was it's kind of brutal, one. like, and it is quite Aye. cutthroat, that. It's very cutthroat, but I think, like I say, I was well-equipped mm -hmm. for some reason. I think it's to do with maybe his home life as well. I was well-equipped to deal with it and stuff. Like, I had mature shoulders on my head, as I guess you kind of perceive me to be anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, dealt with a, I dealt with it quite fine at the time. There, there was a couple of times, obviously, you have your moments as you do and everything, where I was, like, lost mm -hmm. and in tears sometimes like with my mum do you know what I mean like yeah. what the fuck am I going to do next well I was going to ask you that so <clears> obviously <throat> what was your support network like around you Ross obviously you're going through the ranks and stuff yeah. with football you're trying to keep that dream alive yeah everyone's probably thinking you're the man you probably feel like it at the mm. time Um, you're kind of living every kid's dream I mm. suppose at that, at that time when that does start slipping away does people do people change around you or do they still say, come on, Ross, you, the, you know, I know your family are probably going to believe in you. Yeah. Um, but what about friends and stuff at that age? I didn't really have a big friendship group anyway, to be honest. Did you not? Nah. And to, to, when it was football, like, it was just a separate thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one really got involved. didn't really tell anyone much. Like, mm -hmm. unless you and me mate who was, like, in the in the game, like Jake, for instance. Mm -hmm. He was obviously in the game at that level. So, like, yeah, we bashed heads and everything. But there's not really much of a support network there, I don't think, within your friends, because I don't think the actually care really because, like, because they involved. don't understand yeah I get like that. they don't understand like everyone thinks it is like the fucking dream job and all this type of stuff and but it is relentless like yeah it's very very similar to if you're a business owner and people who don't have businesses they don't really understand yeah definitely so after the football yeah um where did your kind of life go from there and what were you what were you <clears> thinking <throat> what, did you know what you wanted to do i didn't you know were you thinking maybe try and get into uni was it nah normal never. job academic what? stuff's no good for me like <laughs> it <laughs> doesn't enough. come natural to me mate um the the college tutor at Sunderland, because obviously you've still got to do coursework when you're YT. Um, she actually had her own fitness business and I was dead interested in it. Like I was thinking, oh, how's she making a living out of training people and stuff like that? Like I was, I was curious about it. And other than football, the gym work at Sunderland was probably the only thing I enjoyed other than football, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was kind of a natural thing for me. And I think we got on well. Um, 
like I say, I, I like to give off like a mature sort of um, aura, so to speak. So I think she had confidence in me that I would do it. Like, so I just stepped into fill fill some of her sessions and really it was called We Are Fit. It was in Sunland. I was training people in Barnes Park and stuff like that. And it was like boot camp type, type I, stuff. Jumping around like a bit of a bit of a divvy at times doing. Did you did you feel and, like you were taking a step back <clears> from the football or not? What do you mean, like? Did you feel like you were kind of going backwards moving, in life? Oh, like, did you think I'm yeah. gone from potentially getting yeah. signed to these clubs, and now I'm jumping around in Barnes Park yeah, at six in the morning? At the time, mate, I was still hustling to try and get a club. Like, obviously, my agent was doing it, but I was like being really busy myself as well. Like, I was messaging. It sounds desperate, really, but you'll do whatever it takes. You know what I mean? As you mm -hmm. know, like I was messaging clubs, I was messaging managers and stuff. I was going on like these fucking weird trials just to try and get exposure, like mm -hmm. in Scotland and stuff. Like St. Mirren offered me a contract because of one of them fucking hell. little. Um, it was like a trial week somewhere, but you mm -hmm. had to pay to go. I had to pay to go on trial, and uh, it's like outreach, isn't it? Really, I You're literally doing was doing that without even realizing. And they offered me a contract, but it was like, "This is your wage." I was like, "Class, right?" But you need to pay for your house out of that. I was like, "I'll not even have petrol to go home." I wouldn't even have enough money to go home. So that was mad as well. And then mm -hmm. that, I think that was the final straw for us. Like I just, in fact, that's a lie. I then went to Gateshead and I right. signed for Gateshead thinking I was going to be in the first team. Like it was like a pro contract. And that's when I got head loss. And uh, I ended up doing like a, they tried to put us on a, on a college, a, a level three masseuse course. Right. And my head just fell off doing that. It sounds big time. Did you time. start doing it like? I did one class. Right. It sounds big time, but I wasn't there for that. Fucking hell, I didn't have it in my head. I was going to college. I had it in my head. I was going to play football every day and like be within a chance of going back into the league. So obviously you think you were humbled everywhere. quickly? Oh yeah, massively. And I just, I looked at my life, mate. And I thought, right, well, I'm at this age now. I want to start earning some money for myself because I've gone from earning money to nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had an agent at the time who was in my ear. Obviously the Vardy thing was all around mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so like, there's a lot of belief there when you see someone like that kick on even though he's a striker and whatnot and I'm a defender but mm -hmm. he was like listen you're 19 drop into men's football there's no centre backs doing like dealing with men in the league at your age go and do it do well and I guarantee you clubs will come um right, before you know it, I'm like captain of this men's team at 19 year old and all this type of shit but I mean, I'm playing the Northern League like not just to speak bad on it because it is a good standard but mm -hmm. it's once you go that low mate it's fucking very hard did you help. ever feel like you were getting kind of pressured by your family into doing football as well never like i don't know what your dad's like but did he ever have an influence because i know a lot of a mm. lot of people's dads are into football oh, do you know I, what i mean i know it uh, sounds like a bit of a a mad thing to ask yeah. but was did you ever feel like pushed like i've got i mean i'm a lad no i, 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 I want to be a it footballer just, it was just natural i, I think my me, me dad was managing my footy team that when i was like from five to but did that not have a knock-on effect? You see, so even I didn't even know that. Uh, so you saying your dad was a manager of your footy team surely that would be putting some kind of onus on you to, to do well to impress me dad yeah, I think that when I was when I was in in and around it, there would have been definitely a, a thing about me impressing me dad. Like he'd come and watch most of my training sessions um, at Sunland. Mm -hmm. Got on well with all the dads, so I think he was there for the crap more than anything. Like, but I'd always like would have like a deep check in. Like, it was everything was serious mm -hmm. and, and analysis of every single session, every single thing that I did after on the way home in the car and that, and um, like almost like scrutinize everything, but not in a bad way. Yeah, I, yeah. I generally thrived. It's constructive. Off it. I, I I loved it. Like so. To say he didn't have an influence would be a lie. Um, and he only had to, we had this thing where like, if I made a mistake, I'd look at him and he just had to do the cahoon scowl, it's called, like this <laughs> frown and, I, and I'd just know and I'd be like, fuck you. And I'd just, like, that was how I would like, step it up again. I think he's probably had much more of an influence than what you, what you say. Oh, I know um, he has now. Steve fucking pulls out of us all the time. He gets us to reflect quite a lot actually. Cause I think it's important that you do <clears> deep it <throat> searching. Aye. Because stuff like that is probably gonna, be a lot of you know a lot of that will be testament to where you are now and we'll talk mm. about that um but from a like an analysis point of view mm -hmm. um when you're saying about your dad would give you this deep analysis after a game or whatever i don't think that's something that normally happens mm. um how much do you think there was kind of was that around you outside of football as well was there other disciplines and stuff in and around your normal life or was that only around football <laughs> Mm. Was he? Was he? Was it a case of like, like um, you know, you hear a lot of people's dads who are like um, army generals and sergeants mm. and shit, and they're, they're doing drills with them, making yeah, yeah. a bed and doing this. Were they like that? Were you? Was it ever that deep, or was it just a case of day well a football son and the coaches know? would embedded that in us, mm -hmm. making your bed and all that type of stuff, that military sort of s mm -hmm. mindset. But yeah, there'd be daft stuff at home. Like I, I'd be 
I wouldn't come in the house until I'd done a certain amount of keep you up. So I had to. What, from you personally? Or would he tell you to do that? Bit of both. Like it became okay. that embedded that I would do it myself. And I wouldn't let myself go in until I'd done a certain amount of keep ups with just my left foot or something. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, stuff like that. That's mental. Like, mad, isn't it? That, that is mad. Like when I was at Sunderland, I'd always like take two bags of balls in the afternoon, set two goals up and just practice just taking a big touch forward and just pinging, pinging the dial. Because that's obviously what the, the the modern day footballer has to be able to do. So I was like, right, I need to be that guy as well. <laughs> so going from that, <clears> then, <throat> obviously uh, the whole Barnes Park thing, where do you go from there? Um, I was doing that, coaching for Way of Fit. I was doing football coaching for Fast Feet and I was playing Northern League football for about a year. Got pneumonia, ran, mm. run me on the ground. I was fucked. I was off work for about three months then I thought, fuck that, because I, I, I attached that illness to running myself on the ground in Barnes Park car park every fucking 5 a.m. in the winter and that. And, mm -hmm. and then I um, I went and started working for Skinny Pigs, mate. Right. Believe it or not. Did you know that or not? No, I didn't. Did you not? I, know, I, I knew you lasted. I worked for Skinny Pigs as well mm -hmm. with Abby. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, lugging kit around in my car every single day to sessions. What was your role within that? I was just one of the coaches, mate. Like one of the trainers, so we're not a coach, it's a trainer. You're facilitating the session basically, but obviously, yeah, I'll try and be the best at that. Do you know what I mean? So, And for those who don't know, or who are listening or watching, yeah. Skinny Pigs is a, is a local, like it's like a big boot camp type of thing, yeah, isn't it? I'd say so. It's like a big circuit thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They'd have venues around the Northeast. Your kit, your kit would live in your car. You're responsible for your kit. You turn up, set up, deliver the session, bounce to the next one. Relentless. It actually was, you know, it was so tiring that. Lugging your kit around, like, what 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 was your <clears throat> mindset then? Did you was it like well this is kind of where I'm going now, or was it just a step stone? At the time, because I thought because it was a it was a big company at one point, like mm -hmm. they were they were they were doing some big stuff, like um, and my knowledge at the time wasn't like beyond that, so I thought this is this is it, like this is the shit, this. And even then, I started pulling the the owner's brother for meetings in his house and that, saying like I want a franchise, like how do mm -hmm. I get a franchise mm -hmm. and all this sort mm -hmm. of stuff, um. But yeah, I think as my own curiosity took over, my own knowledge developed and stuff, I, I realized that there was a better way of delivering this thing, this training thing. So you, you to my knowledge, you, you took it from there and you went to a gym, didn't you? Aye. A, a local gym? No, I actually went to Biker. Did you? I went all the way to Biker. Right, okay. Didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Canal, mate. In my head, mate, I thought Newcastle's the place to be to earn money. So I, I did my level three, went straight to Biker, um, Aye, and the only client I had was Jay. Who's now a member here. Who's now, aye. well, aye. aye. He's kind of a member, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, So I, I trained Jay on my garage, got some practice. I trained my mum's friend, Wendy, on the garage, the, the driveway. Um, I trained a couple of the skinny pigs, coat, like trainers. Did you enjoy that them. or did you feel like, loved this is a graft, did you love loved it? Loved it, I. Loved what, it. did you love the helping people that, aspect? I thought this was like the step, like this is the start. And then like, and, Obviously, you never know what's next, but then I thought, right, the next thing's let's get in a gym and do this. So mm -hmm. I went all the way to Biker every morning. That was a big mistake. 45 minutes on the A1. Fucking but no clients, by the way. And I didn't. <sighs> Gyms for PTs, you've got to do hours for them um, to not have to pay rent. But at the time, I was playing football and I was getting £600 a month from playing on a Saturday. I had. And that was my only income. Mm -hmm. Jay was paying us, so it was about 800 quid there. Obviously mm -hmm. I was living at home. So I just went, fuck this, I'll just pay rent straight away. So I was paying, I was minus 550 pound from day one of being a PT before I even got a client. Fucking hell. That's how much you wanted though, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Now then, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, there was a bloke called Manny who, at the local gym, when I was when I got released from Sunderland, I just threw me selling to training. Like, and he, he was a massive influence on me, you know, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. As much as he doesn't suit my training style now, and I think he's a, he's very old school, but he is one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. Old school mentality. Um, hardest workers in the gym? Aye. And, 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 as, a, and as, a, as a PT, like he didn't really have much business savvy. I don't speak bad on him. Like, yeah, like, yeah, of course. If I was to speak to him now, I, I know I could help him massively, but he'd run himself into the ground, 60 hour weeks, train like a mad fucker. Mm -hmm. Just back to back to back. And I, I was around that for two years, you know. That's what embedded that in me. That. Two years and I, would, and I would train with them, mate. I would, once I was driving to work, right? This is going to sound so bad. I can't believe I did this. And because he asked me to train, I love training that much, mate. I pulled a city and I, I literally turned right and went to the gym instead. 
and sent, oh, sent it's with him. them things that you remember though man. sent it with him doing that and like he would be constantly chasing money and that and like chasing results so when i went to biker i was like man this is what i'm doing like um i haven't even got any clients and i'm and i'm minus 550. I was like, fucking get after it. <laughs> He's checking with us every morning saying, that's have you got any clients yet? Have you got any clients yet? Because all, all the women on the gym floor and the men and that would be like, oh, here's another one. Because you'd obviously have to go and start your mm -hmm. outreach and you? mm -hmm. you're networking and stuff, speaking them. Do you know what's crazy about that when you <clears> said <throat> that, but turn right there, mate, uh -huh. the thought came to my mind. I remember something similar. I was on my way down to Villa Park mm -hmm. and I was doing a, a filming gig um, for a big motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. The UK is number one, funny enough, Brad Burton. Um, he'll not mind us saying. And uh, I was on the motorway, mate, and my tripod on my camera wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And I pulled over and it wasn't working. And my heart was going, because I knew how big the gig was. Yeah, and I was yeah. thinking, fuck, like, I can't fuck this up. So I pulled in, mate. I went to Greg's, right? I got myself a pasty and I was going to turn around. I was just going to gun home. I think, mm -hmm. fuck it. Anyway, I turned up. He was buzzing that I was there. I didn't use the tripod. I got on without it. Did a great job for him. And I remember there was a story that I've told people since, and I said it could have all been a Greg's pasty. <laughs> and that's a thing, and that sounds mad, but like it's a it's a bit like that there. Like you've just chose that path yeah. because that was more important to you. Yeah, literally. And like the for me, it was like a nerve thing. I was like, shit, like have I actually I started doubting myself. I was like, can I do this without my equipment? Yeah. Has it ever been a time in, in your life when you've oh, like on the journey up to the point where you're talking about now, mm. when you've thought, fuck this, like maybe I'm kinda a bit of an imposter, or maybe I'm kinda I'm not cut out for this, whether it was the skinny pig stuff, whether mm. it was working in the gym, whatever it was. Has, there any been, has it ever been that kind of point for you? I think when you when you start losing clients, it's like, fuck, mm -hmm. what am I doing wrong? Because you, you think you can control everything and you think that person's with you forever. Mm -hmm. And like to be earning so little money, like at the time, it was just like a massive like, wow. I need to really, really tighten up ship here like on all aspects. And I just went fully in on just trying to be the best I could be for that person, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I went like obsessed with results. So if you give um, them that ultimate quality, you know that you're gonna build on that really. Yeah. 100%. Do you know, is that what you kind of relied on? You knew you were good at what you were doing. You were always willing to learn. Cause I, even talking to you now, of the, although I've known you outside of this podcast, but it with you, that definitely sets you apart from others. You always want to learn. Like even mm. now I say you're kicking around the gym and stuff and you're always trying to do other things and mm. taking on other business ventures. It's, not all, it's like you're nonstop. And I think it probably goes back to the getting pneumonia in Barnes Park. It mm. goes back to the same relentlessness that you had then. Yeah. You probably got it now, whether it was embedded from your dad, whoever it was embedded from or, or money. Um, leaving there then, when was your first experience in an actual gym building up clients? Clients? It was the bagger. The biker one, yeah. Was that yeah, yeah. when it was? And then okay. an opportunity come to go to JD Sunderland because that was a new gym opening. Yeah. Obviously, it's close at my home. And I thought, new gym. I'm technically a new business to everyone in there. Easy, so did you see yourself as a, as a business at this point? Uh, so you've got a job in a JD gym yeah. and you've saw yourself as a business. Yeah. I, mean, I knew what I was doing as soon as I went in. No one else did. And what was your approach? Two weeks to, uh, to open the gym. So they did a two-week onboarding period where every single person in the in the city could come and visit this new gym and we do show rounds, walk rounds. And the coaches in there or the trainers, um, again, not to speak bad on the mentality or anything, but they missed a massive opportunity and I, I took it. Like, what was that? They would, we'd all stand at the desk and anyone who would come in, you'd have to go in an order to take people around and do the show. And like, they didn't want to do it. So I was like, well, I'll take yours. Oh, you look tired, you're all right. I'm so tired. I'll take yours. I was just taking their fucking tours for them. Like, are they crazy? So I was in front of like 60 extra people that day, giving out my business card, obviously building that rapport straight away. Mate, within my me first, me first week at JD, I had 80 hours of coaching. Fucking hell, mate. And mate, I was set for the year. Isn't that I, mad? I was done. And did you find that other people <clears throat> in there were, were struggling for work? Uh -huh. It's one of the most relentless environments I've ever been in, in apart from football, in terms of like cutthroat as fuck. I used to go in with a mentality, which is really bad. And Steve will tell you this, because when I went to PFC, I was the same. Everyone was the enemy to me. Mm -hmm. How bad that? Well, you mean other, your colleagues? Aye. Uh, they weren't colleagues. Not bad. They, were, they were effectively like, Taking in my head, they were coming Standing against me to take my, my money, basically. Mm -hmm. So you think, you've, <clears> do, you, do you think as a PT, going into a commercial gym, you've got to be more of a salesman than a PT? Yeah. It's funny you say that, and mate. St and stop trying to make friends with everyone. Like they literally that. go in trying to make friends with those. Do you know coaches. what, mate? I, I've literally just put a, a post out on, I don't know if you're saying it, I put a post out on this saying, 
you've even on the gym floor, regardless what you're doing, you've got to be, if you were a PT now, traditional methods like that still work. Mm -hmm. So become more of a salesman and approach people. Yeah. A lot of people give us the backlash of, I don't want to be approached in the gym. Mm. Yeah, but you're not going to be my client then. Yeah. That's not the person who I'm looking for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think that's brilliant. Um, you mentioned obviously going on the PFC. Mm -hmm. What was your role there? So that was my first experience of coming out of a commercial gym mm -hmm. and fully being able to run my own business, I so, so to speak, because obviously at JD, you've got to wear their uniform, you've got to do the the cleaning hours and whatnot. Did you have a mindset though of having your own business? Because mm -hmm. so you wear the JD uniform, yeah. right? You're approaching clients, you effectively run your own business because you you build up mm -hmm. all these these clients and stuff. You're doing 80 hours of coaching a week, which is probably more than people to this day mm -hmm. in them type of facilities. Um, probably one of the most successful trainers, I'd imagine. Um, at what point are you thinking, I need my own space, or are you thinking I need to stop wearing the JD uniform, or are you happy to be a PT with a shitload of hours? Mm. I, knew I, I knew I was at a point where I wanted my own space and a little bit more freedom. And obviously working for a business like that, you've got to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And I already struggle with, um, what's the word? Authority. Hi, I'd say so, <laughs> yeah. You? Yeah, I do a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, unless I'm like bought in and I really understand, but like poxy stuff, mm -hmm. I, it's, I'm not cut out for that. Like, like dealing with people who aren't in the business and don't really understand. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the GMs and that there. I was just like, for fuck's sake, keep mm -hmm. on your way, please. Um, so yeah, I was ready for that. I wanted to step up and that, that PFC gym was like the hub of PTs to go to. There was only six of them there at the time. Obviously Steve was there. Um, and it was kind of like, I seen it as the next step up. This is where PTs go in this area. Mm -hmm to run their shit and, and kick on like, so I did. And then I went through a, a funny immature stage of wanting to be this rich person who worked as little out, as few hours mm. as possible. The four so that work then, week. Yeah, so that then changed my mentality of getting as many hours and the money mentality, run yourself in the ground, to then starting to try and think a little bit smarter and work a bit smarter. Mm -hmm. um, and and what, what's your method of doing that? And is it just charging more? Mate, do you wanna know what I did? I ended up spending 13,000 pound, right? Mm on a on a mentor called Chris Spearman mm -hmm. to become an online coach. Mm -hmm. And I paid 13 grand that year to realize that I didn't want to be an online coach. How mad 13 grand well spent though. It is, isn't it? Do you know what like, I mean? Because it's got us here. So like, it was a case of, to be, to be honest though, like I was picking his brain in terms of bringing this group model to life. I was actually speaking to people like, um, do you know Alex Kitchen? Yes. I'd, no I'd meet him. Mm -hmm. A guy called David Foley, who has um, well, Foley Fitness in mm -hmm. South Shields. This mm -hmm. is a female only sort of group model. I'd meet them for costs and stuff because I knew they were doing a similar concept to what I could see myself doing. Mm -hmm. And I'd meet them, I'd pick their brains every single week. Foley was doing really well at the time. 10K months was the thing, he mm -hmm. was doing it. So I'd go and pick his brain. I was paying for this mentorship type of thing. And I'd just try and pick little things from people <clears throat> and pull together my own sort of model. Mm -hmm. And then it got to a point where the training club started to form. Do you think, do you think <clears> these <throat> people, um, when you go for these coffee meetings and stuff, do you think they saw that in you? Like, is he picking my brain so he wants his own thing? Were they defensive? Were they very no, open to helping you? No, I don't, I don't you? Open, I, to be fair. It's brilliant that like, so it is, what it you is need. good, definitely. And, and how much of, you know, when you're saying 10K a month with a thing and all mm. that, how much of what you were trying to achieve was money? Or how much at of that period, it was, I want to just build a business? At that period, it was about money. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. It was an immature period. Now mm -hmm. I look back and, and it also then like, my energy went on and then Steve as well. Like Steve seen me coming in hungry as fuck, swinging my dick around a bit, like trying to like stamp mm -hmm. your authority. Again, they were the enemy what's, to me. What, what's, what's immature though, Ross, about wanting to make 10K a month? I think it's because I've seen now- Or do you think you put that over anything else? Is that what you mean? Because I don't think it's immature. To no, want, well, to maybe it's the wrong well thing to say. Then. Financially, yeah, maybe it's the wrong thing to say. Maybe it's because I was just trying to showcase that this thing that I'm now doing can produce that money. Because obviously, football mindset, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. 10k is fucking out of footballer. But it, and do you think because <coughs> you come from football, you think I've got to make money to at least yeah. soften the blow of what I could have made? Do yeah. you think that was part of a it little as bit. well? Uh -huh. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think when you're around people like that who were wearing all like, cause you're still around the first team and stuff. Like you mm -hmm. can see the lifestyle, the cars, like all this type of shit. Like you're, you're around money all the time. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then to like then earn literally nothing, but still know back in, in, in your mind that like, that's the. So did you, did, what footballers that we know now, did you stay in contact with around that time or, or not? Not, none, no, nah. it's not that. There's no, it, there, the, the cringy saying of no friends in football is true. Really? Yeah. I think so. That's mad. That's You'll have so, heard loads of people say that, man. Like, I have. I have um, especially as big players. Like, 
Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I've like I say, I've worked with quite a few high profile athletes and 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 different things, influencers, if you like. Um, and I know that's quite. It can be quite um, tight knit, if you like. Mm. But outside of them circles, it's a bit like just do your own thing. We're not. Yeah. We're not that asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're all in the same game. Um, which, to be fair, I respect because I don't think you need to be friends with everyone just because they're doing the same thing as you. Of course. A little bit like your mentality in JD. I think I'm quite like that in life anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I want to help people out as much as I can. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to help people out just because they're doing what I am. Mm. You've got to say a bit of it. I'm I'm on my own path here to do mm -hmm. my own thing. Mm -hmm. um, when you said it rubbed off on Steve mm -hmm. uh, and, and other lads in the gym, what was it that made you identify that it rubbed off on them? He told me. He actually said, <laughs> yeah. fuck me, I want to do this. Yeah. Because yeah, so, that was my language. Like every day I was like, I'm going to make 10K. I was telling myself that every day. So I'm on seven now, right? I'm going to make 10. Did you, did you ever get to that? Nah. In there? Nah. Was that the plan? Yeah. I wasn't so, far off. So, so, so you, you, you're making a lot of money. Um, let's just say for argument's sake, you're making half that, you're making five grand a month. You're in a, a local gym. Mm -hmm. You've got your own client base. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you, you're calling it the training club at this point. That's when you yeah, said it was just born. Started. Just so you started just started this. Form, yeah. What was the point when you kind of exited that? Because I know that your next step was kind of here, wasn't it? Yeah. So what was the po point when you kind of left that? So towards the end, I was running a concept of the training club. It was groups of lads training three times a week. They had their own time slot. They'd come together. And that was when I first, that was when the, the separation of the, and the realization of m that money wasn't the thing that I was actually after. Mm -hmm. Hence why that online thing like just wasn't for me. Um, and that's when I started to realize that I could do more and like have a, re like a real effect here. Like, cause I was yeah. starting to see the communities that it was building. Everyone mm -hmm. was wearing a t-shirt with training club on the back in the gym and it just like, Stood I've, out. I've seen the pictures like yeah and like we had like yeah basically we had like six groups of six lads training together and it was unbelievable like I buzzed off it I, I then stopped thinking about money and for me that in my head even though I've said it was immature to want that that was when I started to mature so to speak but I'd say now on reflection just in this conversation it was a realization that actually there's more to me and there's more to what I'm about to do here and then COVID came I remember the I remember the, the exact session there was loads of doubt around and loads of like um, like whispers in the gym that, oh, we're gonna go on lockdown here. It was a Friday night and it was like my last session of the week. And I was like, nah, it's fine, man, we'll be fine. And I, I was just finishing training them on the lads. And then it was a case of, fuck, oh, uh, Ross, the gym shut next week, mate. Like lockdown. Uh, and I was like, oh, <laughs> no bother, that's fine. Like I, I, wasn't, I wasn't even asked, I just thought it'll blow over in a week. So I wasn't mm -hmm. even bothered. And then obviously two, well, how long were we in for? Two and a half years. Two and a half, yeah. Something like that. It's mad, you know, because had that happened, <clears throat> had that not happened, who knows? Because Abby was working at Skinny Pigs at the time and um, she then had this thing that she wanted to open our own facility mm -hmm. with no clients, by the way. I think what I did was ballsy, canal. Did she open before you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went and viewed that with her um, and she had zero money, zero clients, sorry. She had money there. She had a strong relationship with the, the skinny pigs community. And um, yeah, it just, I, when I went and viewed that for her, I thought I've got a strong community already, a client base. Why the fuck aren't I doing this? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, right. How many clients did you have at that point? Um, I had 36. You know what's mad? It's almost mad that you were able to have 36 clients building your own business out of someone else's gym. Mm. It's almost like, would you let that happen in your facility? Like, do you know what I mean? It's crazy yeah. to think yeah, that yeah, that yeah. was, so you've, you've, you've always got to respect that. Like, cause, cause not every gym owner would do that. And I think that's, that's a uh, really so important. That's what I mean. It was an attractive hub mm -hmm. to go to and, mm -hmm. and, and, and thrive as a business, I guess. And hats off to Richie for having that like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good facility. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's like somewhere I go to be fair. So it's, it is spot on. It's mad because I, I was actually there yesterday, mm -hmm. funny enough, right? And um, I was looking around, I was thinking of you and I thought, isn't it mad to think, the kid who I know came from here mm. and he's built what he's got now there. Mm. And I was like, this is, it's mad. It's almost mad to go back. Yeah. It's a bit like visiting your old school or yeah, something. It's yeah, a bit yeah. like, it was nostalgic. And I didn't even know you yeah. I was like, isn't this mad? Cause I've seen what you've achieved. Yeah. So it's like, um, okay. So what happened after that then? You've kind of lockdowns so, it. Yeah. I, I, you've got the bug, aren't you at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made, through lockdown, I did a thing called Cover Cut. It was Facebook lives and mm -hmm. I'd made like 900 quid a month throughout, throughout uh, lockdown. And I Dame was abs absolutely buzzing with myself. Um, Facebook Live were out. I charged, how are you, how are you charged a membership. Um, what, on a Facebook <clears> group or something? Aye, 25 quid a month. And 
I would do like. And you'd never done this before. Nah. Fucking hell, me. Nah. That tax ball. My in my time, my house was like a, an army base in that. Is it? Aye. It was relentless. Like three workouts a day, two walks a day with the dogs, eating certain foods. I, I think Abby was fucking like, what the fuck's going on here? I'm, has, to, I'm gonna move home here. <laughs> has has your <clears throat> just just a just a quick caveat? There. Has your has your diet always been good? It was absolutely perfect when I was a footballer because mm -hmm. I was like tuned into that. Mm -hmm. I'd say the, it's the loosest it's ever been since leaving football. But would you still would you still say it's decent though? It's decent. I mean, yeah. if if you're eating what you put in your stories, it looks fucking healthy. Yeah, as it's well. decent. Yeah. Apart from your almond croissants. Yeah, yeah. But obviously you fit them in, didn't you? I guess. Of course you do. Um, but you don't know, doesn't it? So so you're <laughs> mac you're macking nine hundred quid a month yeah. online on Facebook groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's still a lot of money, you know, uh -huh. to do something you'd never done before. In my garage on the driveway. So so what happened then? Um, literally, mate, I was the only one doing it. So like everyone just jumped on it and like. Abby was pushing people, like people who wanted her to train them. She was like, nah, Ross is doing it. Go and see him. Steve was having a go, but then Steve was doing mine. <laughs> um, and yeah, I do like Instagram live workouts with people. I try and network and build people like a couple of lads who were playing football professionally, do work out with them. Marco had a good following then, do stuff for him. Mm -hmm. um, aye, and people just knew to turn up. I was there no matter what. Twice, started off three times a day, made myself poorly, toned it back down. Abby was like, you don't need to be there three times a day for people, you know. So when this is going on, though, <clears> do you <throat> have... Obviously, you've had the bug of seeing Abby's mm. gym before this, haven't you? No, no. All no, right, so you after COVID. Okay, Aye. okay, I'm with you. I'm just saying this is this is what I was doing during COVID from right, like okay. a, yeah, yeah. a business perspective. And mm -hmm. you know what it is, mate? It's the least care I've ever had in the world. So I've gone from being this relentless person in the gym trying to earn all this money and blah 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 blah. blah. And I think, like I said, like I said, as I just started to see what the training club was becoming, I'd started to lose that sort of want and need for that. Mm -hmm. And then I went into lockdown, and it's the most chilled out I've ever. Do you know been. what? Do you know what I think it is? Because the reason I say this is the content PT, my business, mm -hmm. it was born effectively out of lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, or that's certainly when I started nailing clients mm -hmm. down because they knew they needed content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think every, that's where the attention was. Everyone stuck in the house. So they thought, right, we need a content creator who's yeah. on it and he's good. Um, and and I was the best around. So I think that's kind of how, how it happened for me. Mm -hmm. But when you say that, you, you said you felt chilled. <clears throat> I think the reason is, it's probably because you were just happy that you were surviving, mate. Uh -huh. I think that's a big part, you know. Like, I don't yeah. think people say that. Like, oh, like even me, it was like, if I was making 200 quid in a month, mate, I was like, I'm fucking money lockdown, when yeah, yeah. everyone's fucked for work. Do you yeah, get what I'm yeah, saying? So yeah, I think yeah. that probably played into it. It's a bit like, I don't know if you're a gambling man, mate, but if you've ever been to a casino or you've ever been, or wherever, if you've ever not wanted to win money, you'll win. Mm. And it's similar. Mm. Do you know what, do yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I know it's yeah. probably a really bad analogy, though. No, 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 but I, I remember mean. when I was young and 18, you all got in the casino and hung like 50 quid on red. And I wasn't asked, I was like 50 quid. No, I was working off. at Nissan or something at the time and I was getting it. I was like 100 <laughs> quid on red and I just kept winning. Yeah. But if I ever walked in there, not that I did really, but if I ever, and, and I certainty knew people who needed to win, it would yeah, never yeah. happen for them. And I feel like that happens, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like if, you, if you're just happy with surviving, the world kind of, and that sounds a bit spiritual. No, no, no. But the world kind of finds its way to how to pay you. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, mate. Mm -hmm. So you're at 900 quid a month. Yeah. You're doing that online. Yeah. What, what next? Then when, when it was coming to the end of lockdown, Abby was pitching her business idea to me and Jay at the time. And, and then she went and viewed a facility down the road. And then I went in, seen it, was like, oh, I need a piece of this as well. Um, and then to, again, to start earning a little bit more coin and get myself out of my feet, because I now knew I wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I had my savings and stuff. Um, I started training people on the tiny little grass patch outside of our gym um, mm -hmm. with whatever equipment she had left over from whatever she was using for her right. sessions. Because okay. she went and did... What I did at JD, the 80 hour sort of week, she went and did that in that space with just a squat rack. Cause obviously everything was getting uplifted at the time. Mm -hmm. She just had a squat rack, a couple of bars, a couple of dumbbells. And she, she'd lash out her one to ones and stuff to build her business, free taste sessions. And then I'd start to try and pull the concept of the training club back to life again with a rubber mat, a couple of dumbbells, um, a barbell and stuff on that green patch. And then the lads just started to come in again because obviously they've gone from being locked in the house mm -hmm. to now they're allowed to drive somewhere to train outside. It was so quite like successful. Breath of fresh air, like a breath well. of fresh air, yeah, definitely. So and where, do, where, what, like, from a belief point of view, though, do you think fucking hell, this is going to be a chore? Like, or oh, do yeah. you just en are you just enjoying it still? It's hard. To, it's hard to think when you're just on a grass patch with like. I was going to say because I can't imagine how much motivation I'd have doing it. That, it like. is hard, like definitely. Uh -huh. How yeah. how are you pulling through that then? them times when you're thinking this is fucking horrendous just 
fuck knows, just head down. Get Do you ever it. think back to your old days, like football and oh, when it went, um, like the, the dedication, commitment? Not directly, but I guess it's discipline. just embedded. Like, I think it's just in you, isn't it, type of thing. Like, just keep going. Like, it doesn't, there's nothing going to stop the train. Like, every day it comes until it doesn't, obviously, but you just got to attack it. That's my mindset, like, so. Because you're still like that now, like, aren't you? Aye. So, <clears throat> where, where you go, where's the progression now then? So, you, you're on that little patch of grass. What's mm. happening next? Well, I'm looking up the road at this mm. yellow and blue uh, to let sign and I'm mm -hmm. thinking that's mine now. That. So that's how you were thinking. That's how I was away. thinking. I so I got in, booked the viewing, walked around here, um, seen the bottom room at the bottom. Thought it's a big step up taking on a place like this. Um, got Jake involved. I know you're doing your barbering course, mate. Do you want to jump in the bottom here? There's a space for you. So that's so you're um, already thinking about like renting out. Yeah, spaces yeah, rented to... that out straight away. He was actually fucking working before me. He had right, okay. two chairs. So you effectively subletted somewhere. You were I, yeah, which. If, is the guy come in and turn the... Right, <laughs> he went, I'll pretend I'm not seeing that, Ross. <laughs> That's what he said hell, when man. he come in. That's mad, that. <laughs> Who's, so, yeah. Who gives you that? Like, I don't... I think it sounds obvious to me and you as business owners, but I don't think... I don't think it's as, as obvious as what most people would think. Like, where are you getting that kind of mind from? To go, I'm going to get a space, but actually, you tell you what, he can pay the rent. I'll get him in. I'll build this little community. I'll keep me costs low. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Because cause really, without sounding like you were arrogant, what right did you have? <laughs> I know you've got all the right in the world, but what right did you, like, who were you to open up a, a unit when you didn't have a lot of clients? You were training a few people on the grass. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and, it's, and it's quite a space, really, for someone who's just starting out. Mm -hmm. It's a big leap. But what what was it that made you tack that leap? Was it purely you want more? You want more for your clients? You want more money? What, what was the driving? The money thing was gone. It was just about building something bigger than me at that point. Mm -hmm. And that sounds cringy as well, mm -hmm. cliche. But it genuinely was. Like I say, I was starting to get the feeling of what I was doing towards the end of, well, before lockdown one, when I was starting to see these six groups of six together training, the buzz, the the vibe. And I was thinking, fuck me, I'm creating that. Like that's come from me essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and the lads were making progress and we were like bettering people. Do you know what I mean? So like, I guess that's what took over in, in a way. And then I reached out to Ollie Marchon, who was mm -hmm. a very successful gym owner, doing the model that I was picking away from David Foley in the kitchen, but I wanted to like ramp it up in a facility. Because um, yeah. at the time they were doing it in, I think Kitch was doing what I was doing at PFC. Foley did have his own space, but I just wanted to just step it up and, mm -hmm. and try and like almost then outdo what they were doing in my head. So did you, did you get Ollie on? is a coach or a mentor? Or he, he was, was a mentor. His brains? He was a mentor, So yeah. he was a paid mentor? Yeah. Someone who you're paying. Do you think it's important for anyone starting out to get a mentor or 100%. a coach? 100%. Do you? He saved us thousands of pounds <clears throat> um, in terms of making mistakes, in terms of equipment, in terms of his connections, in terms of thought-provoking and challenging. But in terms of that, though, what I'm saying is if, if, if you're a normal PT, say you've been in a GAD gym or, mm -hmm. or a commercial or budget gym, whatever, um, and you want a facility like this, you, you know, you're probably inspiring a lot of people, mate. Mm -hmm. So you, someone will probably look at you and go, I want to do this. Would it be the right step to go and get a coach or a mentor? Or are you focused on just make money first? Start doing what you do well? Or do you think you need the coach to do what you do well? So yeah, obviously it's another outgoing, isn't it? Which is what the business head would think. But for me... It's an investment. It's an investment, like, mm -hmm. I, it's quite easy and obvious to say, well, oh, that's another £500 a month. Mm -hmm. But think how much that, that investment will actually help you in the long run. Like, mate, where we're at now, two and a half years, it's, I'd say it's a five-year business, this, where we're at now in two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And you can't overlook having people like that in your corner and having the advice from the off, from minute one, before I'd even put a single piece of equipment there. Mm -hmm hasn't been worthwhile and isn't worthwhile. Because I remember when you, when you, like I say, I remember when you first got the keys for this place and I remember when you opened up, and I think me and you pretty much worked together mm. to start with. Yeah, yeah, even that made, like, why why was I thinking to put social media in my budget before before I was even earning anything? It's crazy, like, like it's crazy. I, I just knew it was important. Like, but who, and again, is that is that just something that comes from you? Like, or do you, is it ears to the ground, research? Da, 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 it's is, saying what's working. You've got to be able to like, identify what what works and what who's if i'm looking at him straight away ollie for instance and he's he's present on social media his business is present you know and he's the best in noise. the game i need to fucking do that from minute one mm -hmm. like i've mm -hmm. had a social media content calendar since day one in that mad because i think that's a again mate like for me a lot of people 
it's like the one social media they don't even know why they want it mm. obviously i guess it's my job to mm. to, to teach them mm. and, and then create the content for them but there's a lot of people who don't understand how crucial or vital that can be yeah. and is um finger on the pulse stay relevant definitely Gee, you've got you've got to be you've got to be making noises you know noise the north as you mm. like to say um Obviously, you've 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 you start to build the clients up in here. Yeah. So you're starting to pull money in. Cash yep. is coming into the business. You're starting to grow. Social media starting to starting to get bigger and, and better. Um, what happens in terms of mindset from there then for you? Are you like actually? Do you know what? Now we're making X amount. Mm. I want to take it to this level. Are you thinking mm. I want a bigger space? I want to get better. I want to get coaches involved. Yeah, how, yeah. What's that journey look like? Um, I was just trying to think of how to scale and grow the business, like, and how we could facilitate and give people more. Give more people the, the TC experience at that point. I want everyone to experience the TC. Do you, you know what, you know what I've always noticed about you, Ross? I think, and I hope you don't mind us saying it, I think you've always wanted to grow before even doing anything else. Like you, you, you almost get a facility and want to grow the facility. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Do you mm. think you've give, and I know you have because you've, you've, you deliver a quality service now, but do you think you could have stopped and, and took a breath and said, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to focus more on training. I'm going to focus more on coaching. I'm going to focus on my own body. I know you do. I know you, I know you work, you, you train a lot, but in terms of that, or do you think it's always a case of, no, I'm a businessman. That's, that's secondary. I don't even think it's that I think I'm a businessman. I just think it's, that's what I do. Like, it's, yeah, but it's my purpose what I'm saying like, is, to do it. You can go to any gym now, yeah. right? There's a, not, I, I guarantee 99% <coughs> of the lads aren't gone, right? How do I grow? How do I grow this business? Mm. It's like, a, no, I'm going to work. I've got me clients. Mm. Not really doing much on social. Mm. I might put a post out just to, for posting sake. What's making you want to keep growing? Because I know you, two, how many years are you into this now? Two and a half. Two and a half years into it now. And you're, you're probably already looking at five years down the line and what you're going to be doing then. And I, get, I know you are. Mm. So so how, what's that, where's that mindset coming from? It's mad that. I honestly don't know, mate. I, it's something, I, I, I do struggle to self-analyze. Like it's something I need to get better at. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. I think I'm just wired that way. It's do you think? Like I, do you think you're influenced to be wired that way, or do you think it just it's you? I think it's me. If I'm honest, yeah. I and I, I'm not gonna. There's that, and then there's also I'm so curious to the fact of the things that can come from other things. Like when I see people who I deem ahead of me or who are in the fitness business or fitness game, the opportunities are literally endless, endless. and unknown. And it's like, what can I? Could we do that? I wonder if we could do that one day. And then it's like, if I if I catch wind of it, then I think it would suit us as a brand and, and me, then I'll fucking get after it. Do you know what, mate? I think me? that's what it is. That's the beauty about what you do. You know, you, you're not asked about giving it a go. That's uh -huh. what it is. I, like, Kurt, video guy, Kurt over there, he'll tell you like, oh, mate, the amount of shit I try, you've got any idea? Mm -hmm. We, like, we, we gone about now, we, we're on the road and that, and we're trying shit, and most shit with these doesn't work. Mm. I think it's a case of going, but it can. And that's what gives you the yeah. ability to actually yeah, get out yeah. of bed and do that thing. Do you know and, what I mean? I think right. I think most people didn't, it's almost like, ah, it's not for, not really for me. It's like if someone, if someone said to me, you could go to, I mean, mate, right? For argument's sake, I, I walked out to, I was filming KSI walking out at um, the O2 in London for, for one of his a big fight, a big fights. And the only reason I did that and mate, that was a surreal moment, you know, for me. And the only reason I did that was because I believed I was going to do that. Yeah. And I said, I literally said, I can't remember why on the last podcast, but I said on the last podcast was, I'll be sitting here with Ben Francis. Damn right, I'll be sitting here with Ben. I, I know I, it's not, it's not a if, but you can call it delusional, mental. You're just a, but I know it'll happen. And I'm not saying that's the goal, but that's just part of what will happen. What is that when you say that out, when you when you say that out loud? What is that doing to you? It's probably hold me selling accountable in a way. It's like a, or, or certainly pushing yourself towards that way. It's like uh, me and Kurt were saying, um, it was actually what you said, it wasn't even me. He was saying, you know, he goes, I've been thinking, you know, if I want to make a million quid and I just did everything in my power to bend to make a million quid, save, fucking not spend this, do this, get this job, do. You might not get a million quid, but you're going to, you, you're going to be on that track. So it's, it's, it's like indirectly doing the things that'll get you closer. So it's like, I used to always say it when I went through a bit of a weight loss transformation, I used to always say, well, you've got to eat anyway. So why not eat a bit cleaner? You don't have to fucking lose 10 stone. Just eat a bit cleaner. Mm. Just compound that. I, I've realized I do something similar. Like I'll, <clears throat> it could be, if someone was listening, it could seem like I'm bragging. Mm -hmm. But what I do is, is I'll say what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Way in the future, out loud. Mm -hmm. 
and it's like just passed off like no one's actually really listening yeah they don't yeah. actually think i'm gonna like do you know what i mean and then i'll keep just keep saying it over the months do you know, and then do all you know of a sudden it's like like this t-shirt what? for instance mate two years ago i was like when i've tech teased here one day do you know what's funny though about that <laughs> because i've heard you in passing even talking to your your, your lads and yeah, that yeah. And the stuff that you got like and you'll say some things I'm like in my head i'm like it's fucking ambitious but like, it's like a game it doesn't it doesn't even it doesn't even stick out to us now though if you say something like that like you you've showed us videos i just reckon we can do that i'm like i'm thinking fuck me i like i do as well mm -hmm. so if you get if you get a couple of people who believe you can do that like it's it's quite powerful but i almost thrive off the fact that people don't listen at the time so this is what i was gonna ask you about so <laughs> it's you've, like a game to me like so how many clients you got here now uh 166 166 clients right you've got how many coaches have you got working in this facility? Six. You've got six coaches working for you now who are, who are unbelievable, like all of them they are. Um, I know them all. They're all phenomenal. What's your staffing process like and how do you pick great people to work for you? Um, well, if you look at the group we've got, they've all had touch points with me in the past and I kind of know them as people. So you've vetted them? Aye. Mm -hmm. Like Cole, obviously I was his PT for a long time, so I know his values his work ethic which is a non-negotiable for me as a person i know he'd run through a brick wall for me sam and the same steve the same <clears throat> brett's probably the only one who i haven't actually um fully known before here mm -hmm. um sorry there's five five coaches mm -hmm. um but even that like we went through a vetting process of brett almost like you come for an interview then you become a member and i was able to be around him for time and I just look for certain things that So I what, what, okay then, right. So just to, just to bite size this little bit of mm -hmm. content, right. What three things are your non-negotiables when looking for stuff? Integrity. So if you say you're going to do something, actually fucking do it. Mm -hmm. um, showcase excellence in your own little way. So whatever you're doing, do it to the best of your ability and have pride in that. Mm-hmm. And my third one, whew. do you know what it is for me, mate? It's just, if I enjoy being around you, if mm -hmm. you like give me something, mm -hmm. like it's, harder, it's, it's selfish, harder. it's selfish, yeah. but like if you improve me without directly improving us, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. for instance, Saman's energy, like it's infectious. I yeah, need yeah. that yeah, because yeah, I'm fucked that. all the time. Yeah, I get that. Like, so I'll look for him sometimes in a session, like Saman, come here, I'm about to do a set. He'll jump in and I'll just, he'll hype us up and I need that. Um, yeah. But then also, like, I thrive off growing these people now. Like, it's weird because I've gone from the wanting to grow members and the, the, the people that we come across. I still do now. Still put things in place in the business to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. But my direct um, influence now, for me, is better in the coaches' lives now. Because I've noticed, as I was going to say that, so on your on the TC social media, um, you champion your stuff quite a bit. Like, mm -hmm. they they do the takeovers, don't they? They jump mm -hmm. on the socials every mm -hmm. day and stuff like that. And it's very rarely you mm -hmm. on the socials. I know you're on your own and stuff. But where does that come from? Who are you learning off to get good staff and be a good manager? Do you know what I mean? Because you've never really managed before. Yeah, you've, you've had clients. But you've never managed staff. So how do you get good at managing staff? There's, a, there's no script for that, I think. That's weird. I think it comes... I've, again, I've like struggled when I analyze it, but I've gone and picked it apart a little bit with Steve in the past. Like, I think being the man of the house from a young age with my brothers and stuff, mm -hmm. being captain of most teams growing up, like the, the leadership thing's kind of always been there on reflection. Um, That's it's fair, kind fair of just been my role in life, I guess. Um, and I guess it's kind of just led that, led me to a position to be leading people now, just leading people through their life in terms of being a PT. Um, had a little bit of success with that. And then now I'm trying to do that with grown fucking men. Because I, I, like I say, I, I've, I've kind of seen where you've went from, where you're going to, what your potential is. Mm. I can kind of see it all. And the mindset is something that I've been very interested in with you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you're aware we've had we've had many deep conversations mm -hmm. over the years, mate. But um, that's something that is definitely inspiring because I, I like, I'll come over here. And I, even like last week when I did a bit of work, I was just like, just being in and around. So I understand what the clients are getting. Yeah. I don't train here, but I can only imagine what these are getting out of it. Um, And I just think that for you to learn the things you've learned, 
you put, you're not going to put it down to anyone in particular. You're not putting it down to any external influence. You're putting it down to basically, you, you, that's what I've identified from this conversation mm. so far. It's kind of your background. Mm. You're not, I get you've had mentors, you've had coaches, but it's kind of you, isn't it? It's the nurture, isn't it? The nurture process. And I think because of how quick, I mean, you've said it yourself, you think it's a five year business within two and a half years. And that's by no means being arrogant. I think that's, I think you're on the money there. Yeah. Um, I think you've got to be a bit ruthless in business. Mm. to do well. Do you think you're ruthless? Yes. I've been told that I've changed a lot in the last two years, even from members. Someone who was a member when we first opened and then he come back this year, it's like, you've changed so much. And and, and <clears> people <throat> are gonna look at that negatively because no one likes someone who's ruthless. Do you know what it is, mate? But, but I, I, I mean it in a respectful yeah, yeah, way. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, I think you've got to be a bit like, no, this is my goal. Yeah. This is what I want to do. Are you going to help us achieve it or you're not? Mate, the stakes are higher now. That's it. You've got. Like it's a lot of responsibility to know that no matter what, your staff are getting paid. So like you have to make ruthless decisions. So if can, someone does something to affect that. It's like, can you give us an example of that? When you're what? being ruthless and you know, fuck. Does it does it eat you up? <clears throat> what? Being ruthless. In terms nah. of have you ever done anything where you're like, fucking hell, I was harsh there, like, but I had to get it done. No. Never. I, I will have at times, but I can't so, think back because now I just think it's the only way to be. So, so exactly, right. So this is my point. That's exactly what ruthless is. If you don't even understand in your mind where, fuck, I might have done something wrong there or I had to do it and I feel a bit bad. I think that's what ruthless is. When you don't even know, you're just like, no, it had to be done. Like, you've just said it yourself. <laughs> you knew it was the only way. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? How far would you be willing to go with that? Are you just like, no matter what, the business comes first? Would you sacrifice family? Would you sacrifice friendships? Would you sacrifice staff? I would, Obviously, I, I don't, again, mm. all in a respectful way, but do you always put the business first? Do you think that's important? Or do you think you've got to kind of have people at the forefront of people? My decisions are based on how it affects the people. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, if one of the lads isn't cleaning up the sand that the other four are, he's getting it because he's bringing their non-negotiable standard down, which then affects the culture, which then it essentially, yeah, it does directly affect the business, which is just a tiny manual example, by the way. Yeah, but yeah. That's, no, but that's the level of ruthlessness that I'll go that, to, but that to the is, cleaning. Yeah, like, and, and that's cleaning. So yeah. if that's like a menial <clears throat> task like that, if you look at, that's quite military, really, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. He's not cleaning, you're affecting all these lads. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's pretty Alex you know, Ferguson-ish, isn't I'm it? I'm obsessed with. I'm obsessed with culture and I'm obsessed with um, knowing him, or everything I think of now is if I was to have another one of these, that's, that's everything. My decisions are made on if I was to have another one of these. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm obsessed with if I'm not here, what happens? So like- every, How is it? How is the business when you're not here? Well, you're I, fucking I always here, aren't you? Well, I think, <laughs> you know. yeah, but like it's took a long time to establish hierarchy and like um, establish like a, a confidence system amongst the team as well to know who to turn to and things like that. And I think we're just starting to get that now. But like the other day I was watching the sessions and I was thinking, fuck me, imagine having another one of these. Like, cause my mind's like just micro, thinking everything in here, never mind having two. How, so so to, to that point then, mate, how how do you switch off? <laughs> um get this, right? I'll just I'll just jump in with this, right? Mm -hmm. So I heard something the other day and I'm, I'm and I, I agree with this, right? So a lot of people who say you haven't got the balance, there's no balance. They say to yeah. me all the time, there's no balance. Like you're always working or you're always doing this. For me, I do agree with what I heard and what the guy said was, I can't remember who said it, but the guy basically said, people who tell you that there's no balance because there's something that's probably not right in their own life. Yeah. For me, if the balance isn't right, it is basically you're doing too much of, of one thing. Yeah. If you're choosing to do too much of one thing, there's a good chance you fucking enjoy it. Mm. So if someone's telling you to get the balance, what are they basically saying? Stop doing the shit that you love doing. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. really, is it a bad thing? Because like I, I'm... I used to think, ah, oh, you need balance, but now I'm thinking, well, if I'm happy doing it, like me, mate, like I'm happy to whip open my laptop at one in the morning and graft because I enjoy it. It's mm. not because I'm a fucking workhorse, mm. because mate, stick me in a nine to five job, fuck that. I'll be, I'll be going to the toilet for half an hour and skiving, mate, <laughs> yeah. knee chance. Yeah. But hoi me on my own business, like what I'm doing now, there's not really a minute when I wouldn't work. Mm. So how do you kind of deal with that? Do you switch off at all? If I'm watching something, on the telly, like a series or something. <laughs> I'll switch off. Yeah. <laughs> if I have a couple of couple of games of FIFA with my brother, I'm switched off. Then that's literally it. Are you though? Oh, when I'm playing FIFA, I because I'm <laughs> trying to beat them. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Literally, mate. Like 
95 percent of the time nah i'm not I, I do purposely try and be present now i really mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. it's something that we both work on um you and your other half i and uh what else is going to say on that yeah it's a tough one but i think oh that's what i was going to say i think I, i'm i've had a conversation with someone who says like to, to start enjoying it like enjoy what you i do enjoy it but like I'm putting things in the calendar now, which are enjoyment for me, like going to these competitions, traveling a little bit around the area, but like still it's bringing- still, You know what's mad though? Because it's still business, that. It's bringing the TC with me. It's fucking Aye. business, mate. It's business. It's the po This podcast is business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not just coming for the crack. I Obviously I am because it's, yeah, I yeah. only want to work with people and, and, and have conversations with people who I genuinely want to speak to. Mm -hmm. But it's business. It's still networking. It's mm. still branding. It's still putting your name out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to kind of wrap it up, mate. Um, where do, what's the future for Ross Cahoon and what's the future for the TC? I'm gonna say it's really boring. This year, mm -hmm. it's about sitting in the business, mm -hmm. which sounds like I'm not gonna try and progress it. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Just progress this, what we've got now. Mm -hmm. Just focus on that. Stop trying to think about the next best thing. Um, get the foundations and the core absolutely locked down because the foundations are key to then what I want to do next, which in my mind is to enable more people to experience the TC in person, because I don't think it can be done online. It can't be done online. Nah. We can try our best to do that. So to get more people to experience the TC, what does that mean? It means taking the TC to them. Unbelievable conversation, mate. Fucking hell, Jesus. I want to start a fucking TC myself. <laughs> That's fucking unbelievable, mate. Um, if you are a PT or an online coach or someone out there and you were listening to this podcast or watching this, um, from your words, mate, what should they be doing if they want to build a business as successful as yours? They need to have tenacity. Mm -hmm. And they need to have belief in themselves that they can do like literally anything to put their mind to. Because that having that belief in yourself and the, the relentlessness to just do, like I say, every single day that you're, Attack the attack the mean the most menial th thing, it all compounds over time, yeah. and before you know it, that thing that you weren't sure would happen, is in front of you. Fucking hell, mate! Thanks so much for this conversation, mate. Being fucking class. Cheers for your time, Ross. Cheers, bro. Legend, mate. Appreciate it.